Do you want NFL picks for week 8? I'm Professor MJ, a millionaire retired university statistics teacher who recently made the front page of the biggest newspaper in the province of Quebec in Canada and who also made several TV and radio appearances. If you only watched my free picks last week, you may be led to believe that we underperformed. Indeed, the free plays I shared with you generated a 1-2 record. However, I added 6 premium NFL picks for members at mjpicks.com and those wagers all won, as you can see on your screen. This success came at the right time, since the number of subscribers more than doubled following my numerous media appearances last week. So I'm glad we cashed together. Before I reveal my first official pick of the week, I just want to mention that over the past 11 weeks, my picks across all sports have yielded 9 weeks with a winning record versus just 2 where we had losses. D. NHL picks on size and totals have produced a 13-7 record so far this season. And as far as college football is concerned, we have presented a 15 and 5 record against the spread since October 5th. Let's keep rolling together. All right, let's focus on the NFL now. My first official pick for week 8 concerns the Thursday night game as I'm taking the Buffalo Bills who are laying 8 points against Tampa. Sitting with a disappointing 4 and 3 record, the Bills must win this game. I believe this is a good spot to take them, despite the high spread. Buffalo is coming off three consecutive subpar games. They lost in London against the Jaguars, they barely beat the Giants at home, and they suffered a heartbreaking loss in New England last week. They will take their frustration on the box, who will be in a tough spot traveling to Buffalo on a short week. Tampa is likely to be one-dimensional again, as their running game ranks next to last in terms of yards per carry average this season. That's bad news, given how Baker Mayfield seems to be fading a little bit. In fact, he has thrown one interception in each of his past four contests. Chris Godwin was limited at practice on Tuesday, so he is not guaranteed to suit up this Thursday. That would be a big blow to this offense that has only scored an average of 14 points per game during the past four matches. On Buffalo's side, tight end Dawson Knox is out, but rookie Dalton Kincaid is coming off his best game of the season. The Bucks are hard to run against, but that is okay for the Bills since they prefer to throw the ball anyway. I believe this is a get-right game for Buffalo, as I anticipate that they will blow up the box in the Thursday Nighter. Stay tuned for my upcoming picks, which are coming at you in a few seconds. My second official pick for week 8 in the NFL is the Minnesota Vikings straight up at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. These two squads are clearly headed in opposite directions. The Vikings have won three of their past four games, with their only defeat being a seven-point loss to the Chiefs. Minnesota's defense has quietly been playing some very solid football. As a matter of fact, they have allowed an average of 17.5 points per game over their four most recent games, which involve facing the Chiefs, the Panthers, the Bears, and the 49ers. That's pretty impressive. Meanwhile, the Packers are undergoing a three-game losing skid. Quarterback Jordan Love got off to a nice start to his NFL career, but things have been going downward recently. In his first three games, he tossed 7 TD passes versus 1 interception. In his past three games, he has thrown 3 TD passes versus 6 picks. Moreover, who will Jordan Love throw the ball to? 
Romeo Dobbs is doing a good job, but Christian Watson and tight end Luke Musgrave are out for this game. Can Jaden Reed step up his game? Will Aaron Jones look healthier after being limited last week? There are a lot of question marks on Green Bay's side. The Packers' defense might also have injury problems. Safety Darnell Savage is out, while Jair Alexander and Devondre Campbell are listed as questionable. Meanwhile, Minnesota's defense has no notable injured player. My only source of concern is Minnesota coming off a tough physical game against the 49ers. They are also losing one day of rest after playing the Monday night game. Still, given Green Bay's lack of offensive production, with just 18.4 points per game over the past 5 games, I've got to side with the surging Vikings. Let's continue with more NFL picks after this break, shall we? Here is the third NFL pick I wanted to share with you for week 8. I'm backing the Baltimore Ravens minus 8 points against the Cardinals. I rarely pick big favorites, but I'm now taking two in the same week, which rarely happens. The Ravens have allowed the fewest points per game in the entire league this season. In fact, they have squandered 17 points or fewer in each of their past four games, while Arizona has not scored more than 20 in any of their past four matchups. Quarterback Joshua Dobbs started the season on a good note, but he has been reeling lately. His passer rating during his last three games have been 57, 58, and 68. That's awful! The Cards cannot wait for Kyler Murray to be back under center. Please note that Arizona's last four defeats all occurred by a margin of at least 10 points, so it bodes well for this bet. The Cardinals may be less motivated and could experience a letdown game after facing two straight divisional opponents, the Rams and the Seahawks. Give me the Ravens to dismantle the Cards here. Let's move on with some unofficial picks, also called leans. First, if forced to bet the Houston vs Carolina game, I would be tempted to grab the Panthers plus 3 points against the Texans. Bryce Young and CJ Stroud will always be linked after going number 1 and 2 overall in the 2023 draft. Stroud has looked better so far, but winning by more than 4 points on the road won't be easy for this unproven Texans team. We also need to recognize that Bryce Young has fared better of late. In his past couple of games, he has thrown 40 d passes versus 2 interceptions. He really has a strong connection with wide receiver Adam Thielen. Carolina also has a good duo in the backfield with Miles Sanders and Chuba Hubbard. Carolina's offensive coordinator will now call plays instead of head coach Frank Wright. Thomas Brown did the job during the preseason, and it could be a breath of fresh air for this offense. Since 1985, teams that have started the season 0-6, both straight up and against the spread, have been very good bets the rest of the season. That is pretty much the case of the Panthers, although they are officially 0-5-1 ATS, but that's close enough to me. Teams in those conditions have generated a 40 and 28 record ATS, a 59% winning percentage. My second lean is over 41.5 points in the Jacksonville vs Pittsburgh game. The Steelers offense finally showed signs of life last week against a tough Rams defense. Kenny Pickett had both George Pickens and Deontay Johnson on the field, which clearly helped him. The running game also did a fine job, 
which is essential to Pickett's success. I think the Steelers can put several points on the board, given how Jacksonville has allowed the second most passing yards per game this season. They have been stout against the run, so that might force Pittsburgh to throw often, which is good whenever you are betting the over. On the other side, Pittsburgh's defense is the sixth worst unit in terms of yards per carry average allowed, and eighth worst in passing yards allowed per game. I'm not overly concerned about the Jags moving the ball. Here is a third lean, Cincinnati plus 5.5 points in San Francisco. The Bengals are coming off their bye week, while the Niners are losing one day of preparation after playing last Monday. That's a big edge going to Cincy. Debo Samuel is out again, which is a big blow to this offense. They have not been the same without him. San Francisco's secondary will get tested against Joe Burrow. They have been exposed after surrendering 378 passing yards to Kirk Cousins last week. I have not pulled the trigger on this bet, mostly due to the fact that the Bengals' defense has allowed the third worst yards per carry average, which is not a good sign when you are about to face Kyle Shannon's club. Do you want a fourth lean? Sure, let's do it. I am tempted to take under 39.5 points in the Cleveland-Seattle matchup. Both teams are likely to struggle on offense. Deshaun Watson is likely to start, but the quality of his play was horrific. Even Amari Cooper did not look right as he caught just two of the eight targets thrown to him. As far as Seattle is concerned, Geno Smith has turned the ball over four times in the past two games. He was also sacked six times. The offense will probably struggle against the very stout Cleveland defense that will be looking to make up for a poor outing in Indy last week. I believe this game will be a low-scoring game, so I'm leaning towards the under here. Congratulations to François Rossignol who won my NFL prediction contest last week. He earned $100 US by hitting all 12 picks against the spread. Good job, man! Do you guys want to play this free game again this week? It is free to enter and you could be the one bringing home 100 bucks. So why not give it a shot? Simply enter your picks at mjpicks.com. I'm Professor MJ. Thanks for watching, amigo.